Welcome back everybody. I love mechanical keyboards, you guys know that, and the industry never fails to surprise me. There's always a new product out there that has a new unique feature, targets a new niche in the market, and that's what we have in front of me here today. This is the Low Free keyboard. It is a wireless with Bluetooth functionality, typewriter inspired, minimalist, meant for Mac mechanical keyboard. It comes in at $80 on Indiegogo right now, uh, but once it's actually fully funded and done uh, and that campaign is over, it will retail for $130. And actually, a quick note on that campaign, I think there are around $500,000 raised out of a $10,000 goal, so it's a very well-funded campaign on Indiegogo. I'll leave a link in the description below. And of course, I'll be giving one away. All you gotta do to win is one, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell two like the video, and three comment something interesting. When the video reaches 10,000 likes because it's a higher price keyboard, I'll announce the winner in a comment down below. So starting off with an overview, of course it is typewriter inspired as I said, but even though it has that retro design, it's also very modern with the curved edges and the smooth black and the black on black, it looks very stealthy and sleek. Honestly, I'm a huge fan of the looks. Over on the side, we have two dedicated switches. One is between Mac and Windows, because even though the layout is for Mac, and I'll talk more about that later, it can work on a bunch of operating systems. There's also a dedicated switch for Bluetooth on and off, and if you're not using Bluetooth, there is then the micro USB port that you use to have a wired connection. And then over on the back, you have permanent raised feet, so it still gives you that typing angle, but you don't have the option to take them off, but that's okay because I like the angle. In terms of build quality, it is made out of all plastic, but that's really okay. It's got this whole matte black plastic look going around, and with the curved and sleek edges and stuff, it honestly really works, and it has some heft to it. Uh, it's not like that cheap kind of plastic where you pick it up and you're like, oh, this is a really poorly made product. It is made of plastic, but they do it really well, and it looks phenomenal. So now on to the layout, and it's not a normal layout, and you guys know I don't like not normal layouts, uh, but they do say right off the bat that it's going to take some getting used to. So with the layout, first of all, the modifier keys on the side of the letters are all small instead of like a longer one, uh, like the backspace key and the tab key and the caps lock. Those are all just regular circles, they're not any bigger than any of the other keys, which is uh, different from a normal keyboard. Then when we get to the enter key and the left shift key, they're just this weird double circle shape that your pinky doesn't really rest right on because you want to do it, you want to put your pinky in the middle but the two circles are on either side. It feels weird. And then probably worst of all, for me at least, is the right shift key is a small little circle key. It's not elongated. I always use the right shift key with this pinky and it's much more difficult in this position. And then it's also weird with the arrow keys because the up arrow key is like to the right of the shift key and I press that all the time instead. I don't love the layout yet and I'm not fully used to it. I've only been using it for like three or four days. Maybe I'll get used to it eventually, but I just there's some decisions in here that I don't fully understand Like I don't really need arrow keys. I would have rather had just a long shift key, but I guess I can look past it then moving on to the keycaps, they're made out of an ABS plastic, it's not PBT, but it's okay. They've got this circular design and it's concave, so it dips in a little bit. It's actually pretty comfortable for your fingers. They are a little bit small, but that was easy to get used to. Uh, the only two interesting things about the keycaps other than that are the escape key is convex, so it goes up instead of going down, just so you can feel that. And the backspace key is red. Okay, it works. Uh, yeah, but I got used to the keys really quickly and it's actually, it feels really good in the hands. So moving on to the LEDs, there are white LEDs back here, there's three different brightness levels, um, and I'm glad they included the LEDs because with the black on black design it can get a little bit confusing to see the keys if you don't have the backlighting on. Now interestingly enough, if you have the backlighting on full brightness, uh, the advertised battery life is a week, and then if you have no backlighting on, the advertised battery life is six months. So there's a really big difference there, but I really do like the backlighting, so I usually keep it on at least the minimum setting of backlighting just so I can see which keys are which a little bit easier. And then on the topic of battery life, it has an auto sleep feature, which is how it maintains battery life and lasts a long time, where if you stop using it, you don't type for a little bit, it'll turn off, but then once you start typing again, it'll turn on, register with your computer, and you'll be good to go. And lastly, the switches, they're using Gatoron Blue. Gatoron is a pretty reputable Cherry MX clone. They're one of the more reputable ones. And of course, it is the blue switch, which makes sense with the typewriter uh, inspiration there because typewriters were very loud and clicky and Gatoron Blues are very loud and clicky. They feel great. And what type of MS Tech video would this be without a live typing test? So I pointed the mic down at the keyboard so you can hear it, and I have a type racer loaded up. I'm gonna tell you right now, the hardest part of this type racer will be when I have to do symbols or use the shift key, because that's where it gets weird with the pinky in this lower uh, key area with the small shift key. But we'll see how I perform. Hey guys, I'm Hackerman.
All right, 90 words per minute, and I did that a couple times and I was getting around 90 words per minute every time. It really is, when I'm typing just on the letter keys, I can do fine, but once I need to use a shift key or put a period in or do anything else, um, my fingers get a little cramped. That's just because I'm not fully used to the layout yet. I bet if I use this for like two weeks, I would be fine, but it is worth noting that I normally type 100 words per minute or above, and I was only able to get around 90 with this. All right, conclusion time. It's a very interesting spot in the market. So there's no other Mac-based wireless typewriter inspired retro mechanical keyboard that also has a sleek and modern design. So if that's something you're interested in and you want the whole productivity-based keyboard, this is a great option. And if you're gonna consider buying it, go to the Indiegogo and pick one up, pre-order it for 80 bucks instead of waiting for it to be 130 bucks. I don't make any affiliate revenue on that, but you're just saving $50, it's the obvious choice. Uh, I really like this keyboard and I'm gonna continue using it at my workstation here in the office. Even though I'm not the fastest typer ever with it, the whole experience as a whole uh, is actually really phenomenal with this keyboard, and that's why I'm gonna keep using it. Thank you for watching, subscribe to see more content, and as always, stay classy.